Question 7 says a student drops two metallic objects into a 120 gram steel container holding 150 grams of water at 25 degrees. One object is a 160 gram cube of copper that is initially at 75 degrees and the other is a chunk of aluminum that is initially at 5 degrees Celsius. To the surprise of the student, the water reaches a final temperature of 25 degrees precisely where it started. What is the mass of the aluminum chunk? So we'll do this just like the last time. So Q1 will be our steel container. Q2 will be our water. Q3 will be, we'll just call Q3 copper. And Q4 will be aluminum. So all of those added up are zero. So Q again, representing the heat, the energy transferred by heat. So the energy transferred by heat within an, within a, uh, an isolated system, all of the transfers must net out to be zero. So in this problem, again, we'll use our definition for Q. So the 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 amount of heat the amount of energy transferred by heat is equal to the mass of the object times that object's specific heat capacity times the change of temperature. So this is our definition of Q, and that's what we'll be using. So let's start off with our chart like we've been doing. We have water, uh, we have steel, we have copper, we have aluminum, and then we want to know the mass. So the mass of each one of these things. Um, the water, uh, well let's just go through, write down our everything that we're going to need. and. And so what you're going to end up seeing is that, so the, the change of temperature is the important thing. And so the water starts at 25 and it ends at 25. So the change of temperature for, for the water and the steel, because the, uh, the steel container that it's in, both of them start at 25 and both of them end at 25. So MC change of T for both of those is going to equal 0 because T equals 0. And so um, whenever those two uh, terms are going to equal zero, they're not going to matter at all. Um, it's going to be Q, Q is equal to zero, uh, Q1 is equal to zero, Q2, so zero plus zero, that, that makes no change to it. So all we're really looking at is the mass of the copper, 0 0.16, and uh, the, the mass of the aluminum we don't know, that's what we're trying to solve for. The specific heat for copper is 387 joules per kilogram Kelvin, and aluminum is 900 joules per kilogram Kelvin. The change of temperature uh, for, uh, for the copper, it's, it starts out at 75, goes down to 25, so it's negative 50. And the aluminum starts out at, uh, out at 5 and goes to 25, so it's a positive 20. So what we've decided is we had Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4. We decided that this is 0 and this is 0, so we are just going to get rid of them in our equation. And we're going to say that Q3 plus Q4 equals 0. And then to, uh, to solve for, for um, aluminum, the mass of aluminum, we say that Q3 equals negative Q4. And then we can we can substitute in our definition for Q. So the mass of copper times the specific heat of copper times the change of temperature of copper is equal to the mass of aluminum times the specific heat of aluminum times the change of temperature of aluminum. Now in this in this uh, the second term here. The only thing that makes sense, because we have a negative Q to the uh, negative Q4, the only thing that makes sense to have a negative is the change of temperature can be negative. So we can say the negative change of temperature. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and substitute in, or we're going to solve for T, and we're going to we're going to throw in the negative. So so this whole term is is negative, and we're going to uh, distribute that negative to the T, and we're going to solve for the term the mass and so all we got to do is divide this side and what we end up with is that the mass of copper times the specific heat of copper times the change of temperature of copper divide it by the specific heat of aluminum times the negative change of temperature of aluminum is equal to the mass of aluminum and so all we got to do is substitute in our, our numbers at this point so we have 
The mass of copper is 0 0.16 kilograms times the specific heat of 387 joules per kilogram Celsius times the change of temperature, which is negative 50, divided by the specific heat of aluminum, uh, 900 joules per kilogram Kelvin, times the negative change of temperature. The change was t positive 20, so negative 20. And so our negatives end up uh, canceling each other out right here. And this is going to be equal to the mass of aluminum. So when you throw in your numbers, what you should get is that the mass of aluminum is 0 0.17 uh, 172 kilograms and so it's 172 grams since it's asking for the answer in grams.